Hey, Kate. Tommy Givens here, professor of the course. And great to have you. Wanted to send you a reply video here in week one. Just try to help us get the conversation off on a good foot and gives me a chance to say hello to you. And also some reaction, give you some reaction to what you've written, which in both forums is excellent. I love what you've said here in the second forum about um, Paul's calling and I think kind of elaborating on what Taubus says about Paul's calling as distinct from conversion. Um, and you've hit on a really significant theme, I think not only in Romans, but uh, throughout scripture, it's especially prominent in some of Paul's letters, but it's this word that we hear again and again that God is active and present in our life and at certain key junctures calls us into something. And what I wanted to say a word about is what that something is into which God calls us. I think that it can be diverse, of course, lots of different things. But often for um, Paul, here in Romans and other contexts, it is being called into a certain fabric of community, a certain like network of relationships. And being joined to that community has a, a profound and far-reaching effect on the shape of someone's life. And so uh, calling, as you say, is not just that, you know, initial moment, but it is all that God calls us into, all of the sort of effects on our life that result from being uh, a part of that community of relationships, the friendships that form, the difficulties that are involved, these just mark us. They, they contribute to who we are for all of our life. So that is a, a way of understanding calling that I think you've hit upon here that, that is just insightful and I wanted to underscore. I love what you've done with Habakkuk. I think it's um, just good to, I mean, you've written out the verse and you're just sort of thinking about this really dire set of circumstances that Habakkuk is writing from, desperately complaining to God about what God has allowed to transpire. How could the God of Israel allow such horrors to befall Habakkuk's people? And the word of the Lord that comes in response you know, helps us to understand faith as something that is meaningful in the conditions of people's lives on the ground, especially difficult, even oppressive conditions. Uh, often we have reduced faith to something that is primarily private within a, a person. Maybe it's, um, you know, effects are not very material and often focused on the afterlife kind of thing. That sort of faith just would not make sense to Habakkuk. So that the just one will by faith live, as Habakkuk says, is about how people navigate circumstances of enormous difficulty on the earth. And it's about the refusal to cave to cynicism to arrogance, uh, to a kind of heavy handedness that can result, as Habakkuk tells us, from um, just kind of giving up on the consequences of how we live, uh, giving up on God. And so that the just by faith will live means that uh, not giving in to cynicism, but holding steadfast to a certain commitment to live life justly, to fulfill in Habakkuk's context the, the law of God, to love God and to love one another in those terrible circumstances. Uh, that's what just people do, according to Habakkuk, and that is what leads to life, the sort of fullness of blessing 
on the earth for people in their lives with one another. So I think that is a good just kind of dive for us to do in Habakkuk that you've started there in Forum 1. And uh, I like how you brought together at the end the way that this faith of the human, of God's covenant partner, is inseparable from God's faith, God's trustworthiness. The way that someone can be just and have faith in the circumstances that Habakkuk describes depends on the trustworthiness of God. So the faith of the human depends on the faith of God. Those go together. And as you said, um, I think maybe following Bart, whom I'm sympathetic with on this score, um, the movement of the the power of salvation that the gospel is about, according to Paul and his thesis statement, is from faith to faith, which I take to be from the faith of God to the faith of God's covenant partner, the faith of the community that responds to God's trustworthiness, to God's faith. And this movement sort of reaches its fullness in the, the life of Jesus as the Messiah in whom the, the faith of God and the faith of the human are one person, one dramatic life. And that's a shared reality. It's a contagious one, one that Paul is announcing as what has uh, sort of gathered the audience himself. It's the context of their calling. So uh, that's a good way, I think, to sort of grasp this uh, programmatic statement for the whole letter of Romans um, here in chapter one. You got some great stuff here in, in the second forum as well. Um, I've already mentioned what you're saying about calling, but um, I like what you're saying about the political edge of Paul's gospel. And maybe one note to leave you with here is just based on what I've I've just said, the context of the political power of the gospel for Paul is especially the way communities of people live uh, with and for one another on the ground. You know, we often think of the political as focused on electoral politics, jurisdictions of government. Those are all relevant, but politics, I think, um, should also be understood more broadly and more diffusely as the way that power is organized and shared, and that eventually affects every government, every election, wherever those kinds of institutions are present. But the political edge of Paul's gospel is especially about how people are living according to the government of Jesus as Lord on the ground in Rome, and of course this applies to us. And whatever we're going to do politically, um, with elections, with governments, it, it should be a function, I think, of how we are uh, living together in our most commonplace ways, as we'll see in Romans, in the ways that we share a table, the way we share food, the way we share our economic goods, mingling our lives um, with each other, the way we share time. These, for Paul, are the kind of locus of the political power of the gospel where the spirit of resurrection uh, is especially at work. So hope that's helpful to you, Kate. And uh, thanks again for some great responses here in week one. Good to have you in the class and to get the conversation started and looking forward to more uh, the rest of the summer.